All right, so let's get started creating a single design drawing. Now, again, what do we need to know? What do we have to have in order to create that drawing? First, you need to have a design that has been saved. It has to have at least a version zero. Uh, you cannot create a drawing from a design that is not gonna be saved. And that's a little bit different from some of uh, maybe the other CAD systems where you can get away with making a drawing from a design that maybe hasn't been saved yet. But here we wanna make sure that we have a saved design we know which standard we're going to use and we know the requirements for that drawing what information that needs to to be put out there so let's go ahead and open our first example and hop into fusion so the first thing that we want to do is open up the drawing example one now this is a file that has three solid bodies in it their bodies not components and we're going to take a look at making a detailed drawing of this so the file has been saved and in order to make a detailed drawing we want to go ahead and go to our file drop down, go to new drawing and note that we're going to select new drawing from design. We will talk about new drawing from animation in our next module where we get into using an assembly. Now, once we do this, we're prompted again for our standards. Now we have a reference. Now by default, full assembly is going to be on this. Again, it's a file with multiple bodies. They're not components, so we cannot select them individually. All three are gonna come into our drawing as one whole unit. We're gonna create from new. We're gonna create a template from scratch. If you have any saved templates, you can get in there and grab them. We're gonna use the ASME standard. Again, we only have these two options. We're gonna use our inch, and we're gonna use a template size of A and we're going to do eight and a half by 11. It's basically landscape versus portrait. So we're going to do eight and a half by 11. Units are going to be inch ASME from scratch for the template create new. Once we say, okay, we're launched into a new file. It's not a new workspace. It's a brand new file. And we're going to start placing our views. Now it automatically comes in and tries to place a view and you get a preview on the screen. Before you place this, you can select your different views, we can go to the top view. We can select the style. So this is basically hidden lines, visible lines, shaded and shaded with hidden edges. So depending on how you want to view this and typically in a detailed drawing, you're going to use visible edges and not show anything as shaded. And then you can pick the scale. In this case, one to four is going to be a good scale. We also have some other options and these can actually be changed after you place the view as well. And this deals with tangent edges. If you want tangent edges to be full length, if you want them to be shortened, which only shows them at the edges, or if you want them to be completely off. Now in this case, I'll leave tangent edges as full and I'll leave the interference edge and thread edges option, but they do not apply to this design. So we're gonna place our top view. And again, once we do this, nothing really happens until we hit okay. And you can see that it removes the shading. Now from our drawing views dropdown, Everything that's in the dropdown is shown at the top. There are only four options. Base view, which is what we just created, projected view, section view, and detailed view. So to start, we're gonna create a projected view. We're gonna select the parent view, and then we simply drag and drop. So you notice that when we do this, we have some options. We can create some isometric views as well, but when you're done, you can right click and go to okay or you can hit the enter on the keyboard. Now, once we do this, the views are placed. If we need to reposition them, we'll left click once to select them. Then we need to left click the dot in the center, and then we can place those views. Now you'll notice it's not allowing me to move them left and right because they are maintaining alignment. Now there's a quick key. If you hit shift on the keyboard, you can break the alignment with the parent view. If we hit shift again, it'll relock that view. Now, because these are projected views, it's a good idea to keep the alignment without breaking it as long as you have the room on your drawing. So we're gonna go ahead and just move both of these views around and then we'll just click somewhere on the screen.